Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The Power of the Daleks Special Edition DVD and Blu-ray. Um, before we get started I would quickly like to mention that I've also done one of these for the Hooniversals. It's a bit more of a talky one, it's a bit more going into more um, discussion rather than what I usually do for this channel where I just take a look at the actual release itself with a little bit of a talk about what's included. Um, main feature, special features, booklets and contents, um, so like leaflets and stuff, and the slipcases and the cover. Um, I'll be doing a bit more, I'll be doing that version here, but if you wanted more of a discussion version and also my opinions on uh, my brew, I don't really talk too much about um, the anime, the new updated animation, but I do talk a little bit about it, and then I talk a bit more about the special features in a slightly more detail, in a bit more of a um, conversation, discussion form. If you want to hear my thoughts about that, check out the Hooniversals um, video of a similar title, Doctor Who The Power of the Dark Special Edition Review. This one will be Doctor Who The Power of the Dark Special Edition DVD and Blu-ray Review. So do check out the uh, Hooniversals review, I will be linking that in the description below. Whether this, that video will be out before or after this one's come out, or even at the same time, is yet to be uh, determined. As at time of recording, they have yet to be edited, but once they're edited, they will be uploaded. And I've also got another Hooniversals video to put out before that one is goes out first, that I recorded beforehand, and will be going out first. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, and also at time of recording, the Faceless One Steelbook review, I will be recording that next, but even though that video might go out beforehand. I will also touch up about Fury from the Deep uh, later on. So, The Power of the Daleks Special Edition DVD and Blu-ray. Now, no steelbook for this release, which is probably good because I don't think we need it. I don't actually think we need steelbooks for any of them, uh, for any apart from the original Power of the Daleks release, and maybe also the Sharda one due to the fact they don't they include the exclusive extras on that one. Um, but anyway, Power of the Dark Special Edition. Um, well, I should also start off, and I mentioned this in the Hooniversal video as well, the Power of the Daleks DVD, uh, the DVD version, has a clear case um, instead of the usual silver uh, ones. I'll just quickly grab a silver DVD. Um, here's Time Lash. I know it's one of the weakest Colin Baker stories, and maybe even one of the weakest stories of all time in many people's opinions, and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this story. I enjoy it, but... I'm not a huge fan of it, but it was the first DVD I could get my hands on when just going over to get out a Doctor Who DVD. Um, I just, the, the first one I, I picked out, it was Time Lash. So we're using Time Lash as an example. Um, so Time Lash is a single disc DVD from 2007, but it's one that includes a silver case. And since um, the BBC had grey silver cases for their DVDs back in 1999, and I think Doctor Who just adopted it for its DVD range, starting with the um, well, started with the uh, the Do Five Doctors special edition in 1999, but it probably adopted it for the Doctor Who range, starting with the uh, starting properly with the Robots of Death in 2000 with the uh, cover as it is. So, uh, yeah, so the usual Doctor Who covers. Uh, Doctor Who DVDs have a grey or silver DVD case, but the Power of the Daleks Special Edition has a silver one. By the way, I'm talking classic series, the new series ones will use a clear one. Um, I heard on Twitter that the reason this is, is because that the, the manufacturer company um, or factory that do the silver cases um, it's closed or are unable to make these um, the silver casing, so we have to do with clear um, clear cases for this release for the DVD release, and probably also for the uh, for from Fury from the Deep. Don't be surprised if that one's a clear case. I was surprised that this one was clear case, but now I know that uh, about this uh, manufacturer thing. I think that Fury from the Deep's DVD will also be a clear case. And I know a lot of people will be very, very, very pissed off about that. I was surprised, I was annoyed when I first saw this, but I was nowhere near as pissed off as some of the other people when it first ha um, first came out. Speaking about this, um, about first coming out, um, I got this um, DVD on its release day. I didn't pre-order it or anything, I actually got it in shops in Sainsbury's on the day it came out. Um, I got the Fury, not Fury, Faces ones, Released on the day after the day it came out on the on Tuesday um, of that week. Um, hang on, I just checked the calendar, but 
this DVD came out on July the 27th, which was a Monday, and I got it on that exact day. I specifically went down to get that, um, that release. Um, March the 16th, I believe, or was that lockdown week? No, that was the week before everything went into lockdown. It was March the 16th, I believe, for um, the Faces ones. So I got that on Tuesday the 17th, um, went after it came out on Monday the 16th. Fury from the Deep will be out on Monday the 14th, so I will be getting that on opening day, providing Sainsbury's got, has got it. Special dish, uh, the Blu-ray I'll probably get uh, from online, hopefully within the, in the month. And the Steelbook, um, the same, might even be for a Christmas present, so I might only be talking about that um, after December, maybe. Um, but anyway, so the DVD, now I've got the casing op um, the slipcase open, oh, off, slipcase is off, why can't I get my words right? Tell me why I can't get my words right, I really want to know. Um, but now I've got the slipcase off the DVD and I've opened it, we can now see inside, and uh, again, like I said in the Hooniversals, in the Hooniversals video, the certification logos have changed. Um, back in 2019, they changed the certification logos in the, for the BBFC, around October, and I did notice this at the cinema, either for Joker or for Terminator um, Dark Fate, which reviews of You Can Check Out on this channel. It was either for one or the other of those films that um, I was the first ones I uh, saw. It was one or the other of those. Um, and they've been using them. It's, it's the new certification so they could be included on streaming services. Um, so the BBFC have updated the logos for streaming services, and they got introduced on, into the cinemas in October 2019. And in April 2020, they've been used on DVD and Blu-ray releases. Um, although some of the um, DVD and Blu-ray releases from um, April to October 2020 can still use the 2002-2003 um, age certifications, which um, here's the face on um, Steel Book. These are the 2002-2003 certifications. You used in the cinemas from 2002, used from DVDs from 2002-3, also on videos at the same time and from Blu-rays when they started up. Um, and yeah, so so from April to October, release DVD and Blu-ray releases can use either the 2002-3 re uh, ones and or they can use new ones. And then come October, November, we'll be getting the new ones from then on for all releases. So for Doctor Who's case, the Series 12 DVD Blu-ray and Steelbook and the Season 14 Blu-ray have the 2002 free low, um, certifications, but Power of the Daleks is the first one to use the new 2019 age ratings and Fury from the Deep will follow suit, uh, as will um, future releases. So we got the new age ratings today, and another thing to talk about with the age ratings is the Power of the Daleks Special Edition is rated 12 in the UK and Ireland. This is due to a special feature on Disc 3 called Wicker's World. Um, the, the full title is in fact, well it's an episode of Wicker's World, a programme from uh, the, the 1960s. This specific episode is called A Handful of Horrors I Don't Like My Mo Monsters to Have, Only Opus's Complexes. And I discussed a little bit about this on the Hooniversals video. Um, but due to that episode featuring quite a little bit of, well, na um, some nasty stuff, it's um, some horror, gore, violence, um, just, just uh, some of the stuff you'll get in a horror film, uh, some nasty stuff, some gruesome stuff, it's because of that 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 extra has been rated 12, which is, means that this disc has been rated 12, which means the release has been rated 12, unless the 15 rated extra has somehow gotten its way onto the DVD, in which case we've had some misprints. Um, but I think it was just that releases the only 12 one, the rest are PG or U rated extras and the main feature is a PG. Um, unfortunately this is a, there are quite a few of the classic series DVDs that do this but they do not mention the age has been raised to, uh, raised up a certification due to special features. Um, this is mentioned on some of the DVDs that they do but other ones they do not and this is one of the ones that they do not and I think it's more often not than do. Um, so now that we've opened up the DVD and we've already talked about the new certifications and stuff, let's have a look on the inside. So like I said, it's a clear case. You can actually see the other side of the cover without having to swap them round. I will swap them round um, to show you off how they look like. Let's have a look at what it is inside as it is. There we go. Um, by the way, all three discs are exactly the same. And this has been something... Um, this, well, this has been the same thing since... Um, 
Shard and Macro Terra. I mean, Shard has standard releases had two different disc art covers, but for the exclusive Steelbook one, Disc 3 had the same artwork as Disc 2, and then from the Macro Terra onwards, they've had the same disc. And the new series have also had this problem where from Series 10 onwards, they'd have the same image on every single disc. I know the Amer American releases, Region 1 and Region A uh, releases, have been the same artwork on the same on discs over uh, multiple releases, but at least in the UK, there have been discs where we've had, um, in some releases, where we've had different artwork on the discs, or maybe the artwork has a different colouring scheme on them. It might be the same artwork, but the colouring is a bit different or something. But since 2017-ish, 2016-17-18, they've been having the exact same pictures on the disc, which is a bit annoying. At least we get the text, which is something the Series 10 box set didn't have. It, it didn't have any text. It might have just said which disc it was. But it didn't really say what um, episodes, um, for example, disc one would be the Christmas special on episode one, for example. Um, but thankfully, series 11 and 12 do say so. And this release, as well as the other animated versions, do say disc one main feature bonus content, for example. This disc says that. So, yeah, at least it, at least we can tell what's on these discs, unlike series 10's discs, where you couldn't, you had to look at the the leaflets to know which one was there. Actually, no, Series 10 didn't come with a leaflet. So if that would make it even harder. So, yeah, that's annoying. Anyway, so, um, disc artwork aside, um, the, the cover art is absolutely beautiful. Some stunning um, artwork there. I am a bit disappointed that um, from Macroterra onwards, the back pictures have been a little bit different. Um, and they don't really match up with the older ones. Um, it's not so bad on this side, but on the up on the actual grey side, it does look a little bit awkward. Oh uh, well, not too much to complain about now. I guess it's a bit too bloody late. The booklet is nice uh, inside. It, like uh, from Shadow onwards, they've had the Blu-ray size versions included on the DVDs as well. Got some production notes that actually talk a bit about the. Um, the making of the story, just like the 2016 ones do. I don't know if they went into as much detail about um, that as the other version, or um, uh, maybe they go into even more. And then um, they talk about actually, um, well, they talk about a little bit of. Um, Actually, these production notes aren't actually about the production of the of the original story. That that's in the twenty sixteen version, but they actually focus on the making of the animated version for the twenty sixteen one, as well as the Dad's Army episode of Strike for Fraser, and then go on to explain um, stuff about animating the twenty uh, the story for the twenty sixteen release, as well as updating it for the twenty twenty release. We also get four page uh, four pages of special features. Disc one on um, for a bit on the first page, and then disc two features the rest of that page. And on the next page, with some pictures. It is funny that the booklet doesn't have any pictures from the animated versions of the story, just the, the original um, pictures from the original story. And then disc three, we got two lovely pages of special features in glorious detail. And all these extras are brilliant. I really enjoyed these. Um, funny enough, the back page doesn't have the cast list, the viewing figures, the release date, etc. that Faceless Ones and Macro Terra um, featured. I'm not quite sure why they did not include that on this disc, or even put some some more pictures on here. I'm not quite sure why they just left that blank. There's not even a scene, there's no scene selection, there's no cast list, there's no release date. Um, making this the first DVD to not feature a release. Um, this story was broadcast between the so-and-so date or was broadcast on these dates in either on the back or in the booklet which is a bit disappointing um they do, do, they do not do that for fewer from the deep they put the release dates back onto the booklet i'm not too worried about when it was first broadcast outside the uk or the viewing figures just the uk broadcast release and the um cast and crew um maybe also one or uh, the scene selection or one or two more extra pictures of their space but it never ends. The this this is a great booklet for getting to know about the making of the animated versions, as well as um, yeah, basically yeah, the animated version for 2016 and the updates for 2020. Whilst the original releases one is much better for getting the notes on the original story itself. The Blu-ray is exactly the same, but I'll show it to you um, 
just anyway. So put the DVD back into its slipcase, and here comes the Blu-ray. Um, with the Blu-ray, I got um, managed. I got managed to get this one yesterday from uh, coming online, along with a present from my mum. I uh, won't say what, but. Um, here we go. Um, something I've noticed on some of these releases is that, and I've just noticed this now, is that the BBC logo is on the top. I think that was on the F Fury from the Deep one as well. I don't think they need to do that because you've got it in the corner over here. I know it's because it lines up with the new logo, but they don't have to put it on the old one. Um, and by the way, I also mentioned this in the Universal's review, they do not uh, put uh, merge this cover on top over the roundels. Um, we, the older DVDs have done this, I just I showed you Time Lash earlier, that had it, a, an image overlapped the round walls, but this one doesn't, and they didn't move it down enough for it to not be cut off, and it does look very awkward. Um, um, yes, yeah, it does look very awkward. Also, I, this is the alternate side cover, inside is the standard cover, um, which is basically the same, I, which that's how it comes in, that cover. And then this is the other side, and it's the other way around for the um, DVD. By the way, that is really small. That is really small text. I understand it's a long title and it's a Blu-ray, but you could have moved it up a little bit and um, made it a little bit bigger. Uh, very tight text. I think it's a bit bigger for the DVD. Again, because DVDs are bigger. Um, so as I'm on the Blu-ray, before we um, swap the covers around to show you what uh, the other sides are like... Um, Opinions on the main feature. Um, the Power of the Daleks is a fantastic story. It's really great. It's, um, great character stuff. Great start for the second Doctor. Great Dalek story. They, they are absolutely amazing, this story. The Daleks, they are cunning and evil and planning the next move whilst pretending to be servants to these human colonists. Um, and the human story is really good too. It's um, got some really great stuff for a power struggle within the colony. It makes some great... Um, human villains and human character stuff whilst the Daleks are preparing for their own fight. Whew. Um, yeah, it's a great story. I've done the review, I've reviewed this story twice with the original version of the animation, um, the, the 2016 animated version. I reviewed it in early 2017 after getting the original animated version. Um, on DVD, and then I reviewed it in 2019 as part of the Doctor Who marathon reviews, um, reviews of every single story. I've reviewed that, I reviewed it back in January, February 2019 as part of that series. And now we've got the anime, the new updated animated versions. I'm not going to be reviewing this story a third time, um, because I've already reviewed it twice. I, all, I just talked about the updates of the animation on the, in the Hooniversals video. And again, I wouldn't um, do another review on that channel for it. Again, it would be my third one. And also that channel had an, a, re a review of its own by member Ollie Everett back in November 2016 when the original version came out. So we don't need another, I don't need to do a, another review for the Hooniversals nor do a third one for myself to, in order to get the point across about the animation. So if you want my thoughts about the story, do check out one or the other of those two reviews that I mentioned. And if you want Ollie Everett's opinions, go check out that review on the Hooniversals. But as for the animation in this story, like I say in the Hooniversals video, it's a bit of a step up from the previous version. It's a bit more updated, it's more color, uh, not colorized, it's darker. I think they follow some of that original version a little bit, but they update and improve it. And they just make a couple of changes that just make it a little bit better. So, yeah, the animation is a little bit better here to what it was, and it's a little bit more cleaner and more in line to more recent releases like Fu the Faces ones and the Macro Terra, and hopefully the upcoming Fury from the Deep. Um, so that's really about uh, really about that. Um, so now I'm going to have a, I'm going to put them into the other covers, so then we can get into the final um, talky bits about these. So this is the second side cover to the DVD release. Uh, many people who get this may put it like this because they want it consistency. They don't want to see the purple BBC logo there. They want to see the white, black, uh, the white BBC logo with DVD following after it. Um, on the, with um, two entertain logo on the side. Um, just start next to the um, next to then other DVDs. And uh, this has been a thing since 2009. Um, although I still don't understand why Two Entertains logo is still on the spines after 2012 when they stopped being on the usual spines. I know it's for consistency, but they could be like the 
pre two thousand the releases up to two thousand and five before two to entertain came along uh later in that year and then came onto the spies they could have still not had the to entertain logo from two from later from may twenty twelve onwards on the second side but oh well it just it lines up with the releases anyway um power of the Dalek, uh, the blu ray one is the side i used keeping on it's the second side with the round of stuff to keep in consistency um with that, but the DVD one I'll be keeping on its main side, um, again for consistency reasons, um, for the main reasons. Uh, I'm going to be swapping this one round to show you what the main cover would be like, and then I'll put that DVD one back to how it was, and then I'll put the Blu-ray one back to how I prefer it. So this is the Blu-ray, how it is, on how you would get it after taking out of the slipcase, and that's how it would be outside of the slipcase, and yeah, it's a it's a nice full image of the cover and it doesn't cut off that Dalek eye. It's um it's nice, it's fine. Um let's do quickly change the DVDs background. We will now do the scores and the rankings. So scores. Um as now we've got the uh, DVD there and we'll just put the slipcase above them. So final scores for this release of uh, these releases. Story. Well, I gave it a 9 out of 10 in both reviews, and I'm sticking to the 9 out of 10 score for the main feature. I will also be giving the special features a 9 out of 10 score. By the way, there is a, there was supposed to be an extra for the Highlanders released on this release. Um, that was not released, uh, not included, possibly due to um, uh, space show issues, which I'm, I'm okay with this. Um, I mean, I'm a bit annoyed it's not included, but, you know, I'm... I'm it's not something I'm prepared to die over, like someone did on uh, in a review on Amazon where they gave the release two stars because the the Highlanders was not included. The, whatever the Highlanders extra was going to be included was not included, so they only gave it two stars and it seems like they were prepared to die over that. Good grief. Um, like, like I said in the Universals video, that is not good criticism. You know, it's, you know, I'm going to spite that person. I'm going to give the extras a 10 out of 10. Actually, this is a, these are 10 out of 10 special features. Um... And you know the Highlanders might be on the Fury from the Deep release, and it might even be the release, the story that gets animated next. Perhaps who you, you never know. The other options are the Evil the Daleks and the Wind Space. Uh, so those are the three most likely to follow Fury from the Deep. Um, so story is nine, um, extra to ten. I also love this cover art. I mean, again, it's minimalistic, but it works really well, really effectively. And unlike your faceless ones, it's not going to. I don't think my opinion of it is going to go down after seeing the artwork for the first time. Fury from the uh, Deeps one is good, but I don't think it's that spectacular, spectacular. But I do think it is a step up from Macro Terror and Faces ones, especially Macro Terror, where that was so minimalistic, it was barely anything. So I think this one is this one's really nice. Is it a step up to the 2016 one? Well, in terms of graphics, yes, but I would also have, um, if you were to include the Daleks and the Doctor and Pen and Polly, then the old one is also is really great, and it also has the Vulcan setting. But this one includes the Dalek sh um, spaceship, which is really good, and I think this one works really great. America's um, color version release just had the Dalek being in under construction bit, so it's reminiscent of that, except we don't have the casing up, um, in half and the mutant inside. It's, um, but it's reminiscent in the fact that it is the Daleks under construction. Oh yeah, by the way, no colour release in this, um, no colour version in this release. Um, if you want to get that on D on Blu-ray, you, you'll have to um, stick to the um, Steelbook version from 2017 for that. Um, however, if you missed out on that version or if it's very unavailable, very unavailable, there, although you can get on CX, um, yeah, in CX. But if you can't get it, or you decide not to get that, then but you still want it on Blu-ray, then we've got the standard release, which there was no standard release at the time, so there is a standard release now if you prefer to get a standard release, or just to have the better animation, but on Blu-ray. Um, um, but yeah, so uh, so the cover gets a 9 out of, out of 10 for me, I think it's great, and the same could be said for the slip cases, um, and the booklet I would also give a 9 out of 10, no leaflets, so overall that is out of, uh, out of 5 things to talk about. So 4 nines would be, um, 18 to 2, 27 to 3, 36, so that's 36 plus 10 is 46. Which means I'm giving this a score of 46 out of 50, which would therefore be 9 out of 10. 
Probably. I think I think that would I think it would I think forty six out of fifty would fit into nine out of ten when condensing it down into a um divided by five perhaps? I'm not quite sure. No, four, yeah, forty five it would be nine. So this is nine that's this overall if we're going for a, by a whole number, is a nine out of ten release. And I think that is the same, if not more than the um original release and the steel book. So yeah, this is a nine out of ten release and the best thing about it are these ex are the extras. There's some really great stuff in there, some nice little stuff, some nice longer stuff, and some stuff from the 2016 uh, release, if not all of the 2016 stuff as well. Um, would have been nice to have the Highlanders included, but you know, uh, whatever that would be, whether it be a trailer um, for the next, for the upcoming uh, Highlanders release, a couple of minutes of the Highlanders animated, like the Wheel in Space first 10 minutes on the Macro Terra, or like the Ice Warriors trailer that was included on the Ice Warriors DVD where they animated and uh, trailer uh, for the story. It could have been an it could be one of those trailers. It could have been a trailer for the Highlanders back in 1966 that aired, and they just animated it like that Ice Warriors one I just mentioned. But as that's not here, it might be on the Fury from the Deep one. We'll see. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the Power of the Daleks Special Edition. It's definitely worth getting. Some people are saying it's a cash in, but I completely disagree. It is a fantastic release, and I'm just going to quickly uh, swap that Blu-ray cover back around. Um, but whilst I do. Yeah, the Power of the Dark Special Edition is a fantastic release, and I totally uh, recommend um, uh, getting it. Oh yeah, and speaking of the, um, I was talking about the cut off of the eye earlier. They cut a bit off the eye on the back picture on both the um, both sit cases and both covers as well. So that's a bit annoying as well. Um, but never mind. But yes, I think these are great releases. Are great releases, and I definitely recommend them, and especially if you're a completist. I don't think the steelbook was entirely necessary for this one. I don't think any of the steelbooks for the remade, for the animated ones are entirely necessary, apart from the original Power of the Dance release and maybe for Sharda, um, which should have been called Sharda Special Edition, by the way, because of the original Sharda DVD. But you know, we got the Five Doctors first release being a special edition, so the re-release had to be 25th anniversary edition. Mm, so we can just nickname the animated one the animated edition. Um, thankfully this one was given the special edition uh, title for this release since they have to power the Daleks for the second time, like Char poor old Sharda. Um, so I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, love this release. Definitely worth getting. I know some people have been saying it's a cash grab, but it's not. It's, at, it's a genuine great release. Better animation than the original version and much more extras and many of them are really great. So definitely worth checking out uh, getting this release. Um, for Fury from the Deep, I will be getting Fury from the Deep, as I mentioned, hopefully on release day or, to, or a day or two afterwards, or day or two or three. Um, for the DVD, the Blu-ray, I'll hopefully get this in that month or in October. Um, and then the Steelbook, um, hopefully, um, if not during September, October, then either for, then for Christmas, hopefully. If not by then, then maybe I'll be able to find the Steelbook in CEX um, or get it from Amazon in early 2021. Uh, with the Faces Ones Steelbook, I found this one in CEX, and I found the Sharda Blu-ray in CEX as well in uh, March 2018, the Faces Ones Steelbook in July 2020. Uh, with Sharda's one, I was originally not going to go for the, the, the Blu-ray, but I, event when I saw it, I eventually decided to uh, go for it as well, uh, to get that, because um, I had gotten the Steelbook and the DVD, but I thought, co co completion reasons, Ryan, that's why I've Duck on DVD, Blu-ray, and Steelbook uh, Blu-ray for all of these animated ones, apart from here when there's no Steelbook and the original Power of the Darks when there's no standard one, uh, standard Blu-ray. So that's it from my review of the Power of the Dark Special Edition DVD and Blu-ray. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my review of the Power of the Dark. Well, my review, my discussion, I should say, of the Power of the Dark Special Edition on the Universal's channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Oops, sorry for that wobble at the end. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne YouTube channel. Really should have done that first. I know it's it's one of the weakest Colin Baker stories, but it's the first one I got my hands on, and uh, that I just got out. It's the first one I just got out.
Uh, I'll deal with it later. Oh, it was either for those reviews, or one of, one of the... There. As part of the re um, the full, um, but if you just want the animation, just check out the. Um, but if you want my opinions on, but the, but to say this, but to say. So, yeah, that makes um, this a this is a really great release, by the way. I meant uh, yeah. Put that. And we will now t um, just um, talk about. But if you can't get it, then we've already got already got. And that's pretty much four nines, I believe. Uh, main content cover booklet. Marvel booklet. Oh no, it's four things to talk about, not five. Cover main cover. Booklet. Oh, I know. I mentioned slipcase as well. Um, scratch that last little bit. 